So over the weekend, I decided to go on a rampage and become an accountant and put myself in the accounting mindset, but I wanted to treat it as a software domain. And so I created a giant spreadsheet with some constants pulled out and uh, a lot of updatability uh, just because here's the uh, here's the actual thing here is that uh, we're, we're currently in a year that has 366 days. This smooths it out. So it's, you know, a little bit more accurate. Uh, but if I wanted to and just do everything the calculation for this year, then I could just be 366. Uh, same goes with the rest of these values. If you see a value that is in white, it means I can edit it and the entire thing updates. If I have a value that is shaded green or some other color, it means that it's a calculated value and I shouldn't be messing with it. And, uh, you know, as you can see, I've got a to-do list here and I've got a bunch of other things I want to do. But you know what? For version one, this is amazing because it allows me to not only know how much the net versus gross pay is at an hourly rate that, and what it equates to in a yearly rate, but it also tells me what the cost for the company is in terms of taxes for my state. That's right. I can sit here and I can say, oh, look, I want to make $100 an hour. Well, guess what? That translates to $72.22 an hour for me after all the federal taxes, all the state taxes everything. But even more interestingly, if I am the company paying myself, here's the actual cost every year for that. And so the fun thing about this is that I can do, you know, I can cut it in half and everything will update. And as you can see, that is not exactly half. There are difference here because federal tax brackets are different based on the amount of money. And so as a result of this, I can do all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm just going to go through here. And this will probably be the most, you know, rewatched part of the video, but oh, well, uh, I want to uh, make sure this data is public. And, you know, from my perspective, the big issue here is what do I need to start a company? Most importantly, what do I need if somebody comes to me and says, hey, Dwayne, We've got this deal that we can give you. We can give you either a 1099 as a business or a corp to corp, or we can give you an hourly rate as a W-2. What do you think that, what do you think? And I can look at this, this form, this spreadsheet here, and I can literally look at that, enter their number that they give me on the phone and have the full tax information available to me, which is not something they're going to expect me to be able to have. They're going to try to give me a lowball number to take advantage of me, and I'm going to be able to have the data to back it up when I say, no, actually, here are the taxes and everything. That's not going to work. Can you give me $20 an hour extra? And who knows? Who knows what this could lead to? And so as a result of that, I now have the capability to know exactly what my taxes are per hour, per day, per week, or per month, both on the employee side tax liability or on the company side liability. Because let's face it, if I start a company and I do this and I have to employ somebody, I want to be able to pay the right taxes. And uh, that's something you may not be aware of. Because if you, you might be familiar with getting uh, taxes taken out of your paycheck as an American W-2 employee, but you may not be familiar with the fact that the company is actually paying taxes as well because they pay half of some of those taxes and they pay other taxes that you don't. And so as a result of that, I can now do that math myself. And, and yeah, I don't expect this to be 100% accurate. Like I said, the globals can change and I've got some interesting numbers here because of how everything goes out. But you know what? I'm within plus or minus 5%, and that's good enough for me. Uh, I'm not going to get surprised. And I can actually go in and, you know, say, look, you want to give me, oh, you want to give me $120 an hour. Here's what the numbers look like. Actually, my services are $200 an hour. Sorry. Here's what the numbers look like. 
What? You want to give me $500 an hour? I mean, that'd be nice, but let's face it, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, Although I do do AI, so who knows? Uh, but the end result is that I have this now, and that was a secret project. Uh, I decided to do this as a one-week sprint, and uh, today is Wednesday, so it's the end of the sprint. And uh, you might think to yourself, wait, Dwayne, don't sprints, ha don't sprints happen on Friday? Actually, they do normally, but I started this sprint on Wednesday, so I wanted to be true to that. And this is my demo. I have everything working. I have the ability to just add random non-payroll company side line item expenses, and they get added to the expenses from the company side, which is why this stuff up here may not match exactly this and this, because I'm adding extra expenses to it. I have the full package here. Now, it's not perfect, and it's not going to replace my accountant, who I love, absolutely love my accountant. She is great. And if you're watching, don't worry. You're safe. I don't want your job. Trust me. But I do want to be more intelligent about my interaction with my accountant, and I want to make things easier for my accountant. And I also want to make fast, smart business decisions. The thing that really got me thinking about this was the phrase, know your numbers. I kept hearing that throughout my entire career. And I heard it again recently, and it made me have flashbacks to all the billionaires and super successful people that I've met and known who have said that in casual conversation. So if you haven't done this for yourself, do it. Are you a software development engineer? Then do this, because if you, don't, if you can't handle Excel, then you shouldn't be in software anyway. Let's face it, Excel is really simple. Referencing other sheets in Excel, really simple if you're a software development engineer. If you can't master Excel, then you're probably not a very good engineer. And this is not just data science, although data science is important. As a software development engineer, this is critical that you should know how to do this. But I'm also saying all this with the bias of actually having code in Excel. I worked on Excel when I was at Microsoft at one point. And so every time somebody boots up Excel, they're running my code. And so I might have a bias here. but. I also like Excel, and I know Excel pretty well because of that. So the end result is that I am going to do everything in my power to make sure that I have an accurate idea of what's needed and what's not. And so the idea here is for me to do everything I can to make sure this is accurate. And yeah, I'll probably find problems with it, and I'll find mistakes, and every year I'll have to update this stupid federal income thing that really sucks, but, uh, you know, it's just going to happen and that's how it is.